A simple maintenance task can become a life-threatening activity when working on operational equipment. This can occur when equipment unexpectedly activates because you accidentally turned it on yourself or someone who cannot see what you are doing starts it up. You could lean over to undo a bolt and lose a finger, an arm, or even your life. Isolation procedures, often called lockout tagout, are designed to prevent equipment from activating during maintenance and servicing. This video covers general principles, key steps to lockout tagout, restrictive devices, tagouts, group lockout tagout, multiple energy sources, hidden energy, case studies in electrical and mechanical equipment, key steps to restart, When you are trying to work out how best to isolate equipment, think about what needs to happen so that the equipment cannot be turned back on except by the person who locked it out. Rather than simply lock out the power switch to the machine, it is preferable to cut off and lock out energy sources at the earliest possible point. It is generally best to disconnect power from the supply. If it is not possible to lock out energy sources, then tagouts can be used to alert others that the equipment must not be used. The person who is to perform maintenance or servicing should be the person to conduct the lockout tagout. Only the person who attaches the lock or tag should be allowed to remove it. If you leave isolated equipment for more than an hour, retest the equipment to make sure it is still isolated. The process that will lead to a safe and effective isolation can be broken down into key steps. Notify all affected personnel that the particular equipment will be shut down and isolated. Identify all of the energy sources into the equipment and work out the best way to stop energy getting to it. Use the normal controls to stop the equipment operating. Isolate the equipment so that no energy is entering it. Install lockout or tagout devices on all energy sources. Make sure that no other hidden forms of energy, such as pressurized lines, are present within the machine. Before you begin maintenance, test all parts of the machine to make sure they are isolated. It is preferable to physically isolate equipment using restraining aids such as padlocks, hasps and chains. Use the device that is going to offer the best protection for you and your fellow workmates. Ensure all devices are in good condition before using them. All restraining devices should have tags attached to them identifying who put them on, what job that person is carrying out and start and finish time. Most recently constructed equipment will have lockout capability designed into it by means of a hasp and padlock. New designs in lockout devices have also allowed older equipment to be locked out. A circuit breaker lockout can be used to isolate electrical equipment. Valves and pipes should be isolated if there is the potential for the unexpected release of vapors and fluids into the work area. Chains and padlocks can be used to isolate gate valves. The chain can be threaded through the handle and around another object. 
the padlock should be secured through the links so that movement of the valve towards the open position is not possible. Gate valves can also be secured with a special lockout device that fits over the gate valve, preventing accidental access. Bowl valve lockouts do not allow the valve to be opened past the lockout point. Tagouts can be used where lockouts are not suitable due to the nature of the equipment being isolated. The tags should be attached to the main isolating switch or valve, which is generally at the first point where energy can be turned on. As with lockouts, the person who is conducting maintenance on the equipment should be the person to conduct the tagout. The tag should state the name of the person implementing the lockout tagout and include a signature. The tag should tell you the start date and time of the isolation and the expected completion date and time. The only person who can remove a tagout is the person who implemented it. Tags should be of a durable material that can handle the required conditions without fading or rotting. The tag should be distinctive and clearly noticeable. If you come across a piece of equipment with a tag on it, under no circumstances should you remove it or turn on the power source. If you believe tagged out equipment can or should be reactivated, but the person who tagged it out is unavailable, contact a supervisor. Tags should also be placed on locked out equipment as an additional visual warning that the equipment has been isolated and to provide information about the lockout. Group lockouts and tagouts are necessary when more than one person is to work on a piece of isolated equipment. This can occur when two people are working several kilometers apart on a pipe. If the person at one end of the pipe is not aware that someone else is working on the pipe down the line, the results could be disastrous. One person could finish their work, remove their lockout, and reactivate the pipeline, leaving the other person down the line subject to dangerous gases or fluids. Essentially, each person needs to individually lock and tag out the equipment. In these situations, a supervisor should also conduct a lockout tagout. The hasp should have a number of holes that allow more than one padlock to be attached. Each person working on the equipment should attach their own padlock to the hasp. The area supervisor should also place his padlock onto the hasp so that re-energizing cannot be undertaken until they are satisfied all work has been completed and it is safe to start using the equipment again. Some equipment has more than one energy source that needs to be isolated. Special care needs to be taken in these situations so that no energy source is overlooked when isolation procedures are carried out. Any equipment that has more than one energy source should have a written safe isolation procedure. If the equipment you are isolating contains hidden or stored energy, you need to release that energy before you start working on it or secure it so that it cannot be released accidentally. 
stored energy might be found in an accumulator, which can store residual pneumatic energy after the pneumatic power has been locked off. This air needs to be bled to make the machine safe for maintenance. Before starting an isolation, discuss your plans with the area supervisor. Ensure that all affected personnel are notified that an isolation is to take place. Identify the main power source for the equipment. Shut the machine down using the normal controls. Turn off the main supply and place a hasp through the switch, lever or dial. Place your individual padlock through the hasp and tag it with the required information. For some items of equipment, a circuit breaker lockout should be used. Locate any possible secondary energy sources and ensure that they are closed and locked or tagged. Remember to look for stored energy. If possible, lock out the controls to ensure they cannot be turned on accidentally. Before any work is carried out, test that all energy sources have been isolated by attempting to operate the machine using the controls. Talk about your intentions with the area supervisor and communicate to personnel that an isolation is to take place. Identify all parts of the equipment which are powered by fluids, gases or air. Block, pin or otherwise secure any part of the equipment which may fall or release once energy sources have been isolated. Turn off the supply of energy to the equipment at a point before it reaches the regulator. Bleed the remaining fluids to a secure container and the air or gases into the atmosphere. Attach lockout padlocks to hasps on any hydraulic or pneumatic locks or other devices used to lock out isolated energy sources. Check that the de-energized machinery sits securely and safely. Test all parts of the machine to make sure they are isolated. Remove all rubbish, tools and spares from the work area. Ensure that all personnel have been removed from the isolated work area. Inform all affected personnel that the machine is about to be brought back online. Remove all isolation locks and tags. Remember that only the person who attaches the lock or tag should be allowed to remove it. Notify personnel that the equipment can now be brought back online. Isolation procedures are one of the most important safety measures to implement when servicing or maintaining equipment. It is critical that personnel working around operational equipment understand lockout, tagout, and follow the procedures rigorously. If an isolation is not performed correctly and securely, or if unauthorized personnel remove a tagout, the results can be life-threatening. <laughs> 